Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning and welcome to this devotion from our Daily Fountain, a devotional guide of the Anglican Communion. Today is Wednesday, 15th December, 2021. And our topic is Look Up. The test is Micah 7, 1 to 7. I read. Woe is me. For I am like those who gather summer fruits, like those who glean vintage grapes. There is no cluster to eat, or the first ripe fruit which my soul desire. The faithful man has perished from the earth, and there is no one upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net that they may successfully do evil with both hands. The prince asks for gift. The judge seek a bribe. And the great man utter the evil desire. So they scheme together. The best of them is like a dire. And most upright is shapen than a thorn hedge. The day of your watchman and your punishment comes. Now shall be their perplexity. Do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your bosom. For son dishonors father. Daughter rise against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. Therefore, I will look to the Lord, and I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've brought us into. The 15th day and the month of December 2021. We ask, O oh God, that you minister unto us. And help us to look up unto you in all we do. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, I welcome you to this devotion. And I pray that God will encourage and strengthen us in course of this devotion. Obviously, the passage you've just read will be divided into two segments. Verses 1 to 6. And verse 7. Verses 1 to 6 talks about the terrible state of affairs in the days of prophet Micah. A time whereby faithful men were destroyed. While criminals were celebrated. That's powerful. That's serious. Faithful men destroyed. Criminals celebrated. A time also where every man haunt his fellow man. Every man was out for his brother. A lot of killings. A lot of troubles. It was also a time 
We are those in authority. They yearn for gifts. They look for bribe. Even the Bible says judges, judges long for bribe. That's terrible. Sin was all over the place. What a mess. What a terrible situation. No wonder the prophet, in the opening chapter, opening verse of the chapter 7, lamented with a great lamentation. Woe is me. Woe is me. What a state of affairs. But beloved, how do you see the state of our nation today? In comparison with what transpired in the world of this prophet Micah. The insecurity we have all over the place, the mass killing, Corruption in everyone's life in this nation. I rose today and nothing to write to me about. Why? Corruption. To take the route from this Abuja, this great city, even to any part of the country today is a problem. How do you see this nation? What of individual lives? Things you bought yesterday, when you repeat today, it's a different story. Things are skyrocketing on a daily basis because of the mess from everyone in the society. I pray that God will help us God will deliver us. God will save us from this situation, precarious one that we find ourselves today. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. In all this mess, people have come to lose hope. They've lost confidence in themselves. They've lost confidence in this nation. And people go about here and there in a hopeless situation. Thank God for verse 7 of our passage. Which is also talking about hope to the hopeless. Hope to the hopeless. And as I went through this passage and coming to verse 7, I was stirred. I was excited because God is a good God and he will not leave his children. He will not leave the nation. He has never left his people in the pool of frustration without an escape route. By the nature of God, even when he punishes, he prepares an escape route. Thank God for him. And that's why the verse 7 gives hope to the hopeless. If only we will be able to look up unto him as a nation. If only we are able to look unto him as individuals. If only we can look up to him. As families, he has promised us hope. We should stop looking at other people. We should stop looking at men. We should stop looking at the situation of things. Remember, the other day when Jesus was walking on the water, Peter saw him and said, If you were the one, bid me come. And the statement was, come. The man stepped on the water. And because he was looking 
on Jesus. He walked on the supernatural. He walked on the water. Oh, what a life. What a moment in the life of Peter. But the Bible says, the man started sinking the moment he saw a different thing. When he saw the waves, fear came and he started sinking. Thank God he cried out. We've looked too much on people. It is time to look up to God. As a nation, if you remember in 1976, this whole nation was dragged into a mess in the name of Festac. Idolatry was celebrated. We need national repentance. Coming to God in repentance as a nation. We need individual coming to God. We need families coming to God and looking unto him, not unto anything. People want to run from the country today, abroad. No, 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 no. Not there. If we must look somewhere else, it's above. We must look on him. But how can we look? How? What are the ways? What can we do to look unto this God? One, there must be total and absolute repentance. There must be the coming back to this King of kings and the Lord of lords. Do we need peace in this nation? I think yes. Do we need joy? Do we need prosperity for all, not among some Yes, that will only come if there is a coming back to him, surrendering our lives and everything we have to this almighty God. That's number one. Number two, we must be ready to trust only in him. Maybe we are looking onto one country or the other, one nation or the other. For survivor. Maybe we want to rely maybe on China, maybe in the US, which I don't think even. No, no, no. Our reliance, our trust should be in this God. And that's why this devotion is coming to us this morning. Look up. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And the third point, how we can look up to God is through prayer. Oh, we really pray and we pray in this nation. Prayer everywhere, prayer houses here and there. But the truth is, our prayers are one-sided. We jump here and there, which is a very good thing. But we fail to understand that prayer should bring about the death of the person praying. As we come to the place of prayer, we are to die at that altar that himself will live through us. We are to die. You remember the prayer of Jacob when he wrestled with the angel? That night, into the morning, Jacob died and Israel came to life. This is powerful. The truth is, we don't pray to kill the devil. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We pray to kill our desires and wills. So God can be revealed to the world. That is it. Remember Jesus said one day, he said the prince of the world is coming. The prince is coming. The evil one is coming. He has nothing in me. I don't have any of his property. In prayer, we scatter, we destroy every property of the evil one for God to be glorified. May I quickly say this, people? 
that there are three levels of prayer. One is praying with your understanding, which we all do. Praying with our understanding. We talk to God in our dialects, the language we understand. This is powerful, and God answers. The second level is praying in tongues. Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, and verse 14 and 15. What will I say? That's what Paul was saying. I will pray. In my understanding, I will pray with the spirit also. I will sing with my understanding. I will sing with the spirit also. You see it? I will first of all pray. But at the same time, pray in my spirit man. Speaking in tongues. That's a purer prayer than with our understanding. Why? When you pray in tongues, you are not the one praying. Though you open your mouth, it's the one praying through you. No devil understands that. Therefore, no devil can stop it. You see it? Number two. You can't easily get exhausted or short of words when you pray in tongues. Because he's the one doing the praying. Now the third level is the level whereby you don't use words. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. You don't use words. The Bible says the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Groanings. When you groan in the Spirit, oh, you remember when Jesus groaned by the tomb of Lazarus. He groaned in the Spirit. This is a level God wants to take us into. Tongues and the level of groaning in the spirit. At this point, you don't need your own words. It's God communicating with God. We need it as individuals. We need the whole body of Christ. In this nation, we need this nation to groan before God. Then, the glory of this nation will come alive. Nigeria has a glory. But because of this mess, and because we are not praying as we ought to pray, because somehow our prayers are selfish. Oh Lord, destroy this. Oh Lord, kill this. Just for me and me and me alone. We are not having the result we should have. May God help us as a nation. May God help us as families. May God help us as individuals to know what to do and doing it at the right time. In the name of Jesus. The prophet concludes authoritatively that God will hear us. That's verse 7. That even as we journey through all this nonsense, all this mess, all these troubles everywhere, when we pray, there's an assurance that God will hear us. That God will hear us as we look unto him, as we look up to him in prayers. Oh, people of God, as we are burdened to cry out, says, God, even our God, we hear us. This is very, very powerful. And it's our prayer that this great God we serve, this great God we de- come to dedicate our lives to, we hear us as we cry. That all this mess everywhere will be a thing of the past. And we will live the life that God wants us to live. I pray that God will bless you as you listen, as you go out today, and you, as you decide to look up to him, and not to any man, nor to any country, not to any philanthropy, but to God. It's my prayer that as you go out this morning, the goodness and the glory of God will envelop your life, and you will see reasons 
to be grateful unto God. Let us pray. And so, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise for your love and mercy. Only you can quicken us to look up to you. Only you can give us the ability to do that. As in your word, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, that you are the one who willing us to do according to your own good pleasure. We ask, oh God, as we go out, help us to look up to you. Help Nigeria. Help this earth. Help your people to look up to you. That our lives will be saturated with your goodness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com. <laughs>